Today's video is about ammonium chloride. Sounds not very exciting, but there are some wonderful clouds of white smoke and quite a surprising effect when you put the compound in water. Let's begin with ammonium chloride and what happens when you heat it. Most things when you heat them either melt or occasionally decompose. But ammonium chloride is unusual that when you heat it, it undergoes what is called sublimation, turns into a gas, which then goes straight back to the solid. So as you heat a test tube with ammonium chloride in it, you can see the white crystals just going up the side of the test tube from the hot part and condensing on the colder part. So what happens is the ammonium chloride has the formula NH4 plus Cl minus. And when you heat it up, it turns into ammonia, NH3, and hydrogen chloride, HCl. And these gases move up and then react again. So, so it's almost like a Star Trek teleporter. Yes. You're, you're beaming from lower in the test tube to the top of the yes. test tube, reforming as you were before. Yes. I haven't seen Star Wars, but... Star Trek, that one Star is. Star Trek. Well, I haven't <laughs> seen either. <laughs> the second thing which is quite surprising about ammonium chloride is what happens when you dissolve it in water. Some salts, when you dissolve them in water, get really hot. The water can actually boil. With ammonium chloride, when you dissolve it in water, it actually gets colder because yeah. it takes energy from the water to break up the crystals. So in the experiment, you can see the temperature going down. It goes below zero centigrade, zero Celsius, the freezing point of water. Though, of course, there's so much ammonium chloride in the water by that stage that it wouldn't freeze at that temperature anyway but it is really quite a striking effect how this material, when you put it into water, can lower the temperature so much. It is because you need energy to pull apart the positive and negative ions in the crystal. And you get some of that energy back when the water molecules interact with the ions when they're dissolved. But in this case, you get less energy back than you need to break up the crystals. The process still takes place because of what is called entropy, because you take this very ordered crystal and you end up with disordered ions in the solution, but the temperature goes down. The thing that people really like with ammonium chloride is making it from ammonia and HCl gas. And this is a reaction which from time to time has been proposed for making smoke screens for naval ships or warfare. So Neil made really quite a neat piece of kit in which he could blow the ammonia gas and the hydrogen chloride gas out of solution through two nozzles that were just pointing at each other. Ammonia is dissolved in water, the HCl is dissolved in water. So to force them out, Neil blew in nitrogen gas into both liquids, and that nitrogen gas carried the ammonia and HCl out of the flasks and into the gas phase where they could mix. And you can see that as these gases mix, they form tiny crystals, which are so small that it just looks like white smoke. And these go up into the fume hood. And in order to demonstrate it better, Neil decided not to have the fume hood switched on until the fumes were coming out. And then when the fume hood was filling up, he switched on the fan and you can see these things swilling around. It's a very simple reaction, but it's really dramatic and one that I really like. It isn't always complicated reactions that are beautiful. Very simple things, ammonia 
and HCl can give you very interesting effects. The really nice experiments, which none of us are brave enough to do, is you can demonstrate that if you inject ammonium chloride into your bloodstream, it makes the blood very acid. And this was discovered by a famous physiologist, J.B.S. Haldane, who for some reason I can't remember wanted to make his blood acid. So he injected himself with a large amount of ammonium chloride. But none of us would dare do it. And it's a mad experiment for anybody else to try. But he did it in the interest of science. Neither Neil or I had ever seen it before. There was a slight problem that the bung hadn't been pushed in quite hard enough, so little air was leaking in as well. 